Greetings once again, students, and uh, welcome back to another session here in TESOL Methods. We're looking at uh, Kola's uh, planning and monitoring and evaluating section uh, in their uh, in the in the scheme. There, this again, we're using uh, Shema's textbook, uh, the Kola Handbook, uh, which again I would recommend that you pull out so that you can understand what's going on here. They also have an excellent website where you can get a lot of the same information. Today, we're going to be looking at how to plan for Kola um, instruction. We're going to look at the phases that are involved, and uh, then we're going to talk a little bit about how to evaluate whether the instruction was actually worth, worthwhile and effective. First thing that you're going to want to do as you're preparing a color instruction uh, materials is that you're going to want to find out what your students know. You're going to assess their, their knowledge. So you're going to find out what their background knowledge is. You're going to have to try to have them do a self-assessment. What do they already know about the fields that they're studying and about, their um, and about their language abilities in English? You also should find out a little bit about uh, their demographics. Uh, do they have, what's their first language? How often is it spoken in the home? And that kind of thing. Um, and after you ask, uh, assess that prior information, it's going to help you better understand and set up the goals and objectives that you're going to need to set up for your classes. Of course, after you have that background knowledge, after you have the uh, prior knowledge that, that the students understand, then you can take the knowledge that you have related to uh, the content areas, and you can begin to break that down into uh, goals and objectives, which is the next point here that you're going to have. You want to try to set objectives now that you have the background and you have the uh, information from the areas of study. You should set objectives for content and linguistics and st strategic. Try to set up a strategy and a ling linguistic areas and content areas for your lessons. Please bear in mind that these areas should be set up that they are measurable goals. Measurable content goals, measurable linguistic objectives, and measurable strategies. Um, that's basically what I would consider the scope of elements that you're going to be covering in this particular lesson. You may also do the same thing for the entire course or for the entire curriculum. You set up the things that they're supposed to be studying in that particular area. Um, after you set up your goals and you know what it is you're aiming for, you now need to collect the materials that you need and you need to start putting them together. So for example, if you're dealing with uh, a health class and uh, you students need to understand uh, the effects of certain types of drugs um, and so uh, you're going to have to have that content information, but you're also going to have to break that down linguistically. What special vocabulary will they need? What special phrases might they need? What special uh, grammar might be included in that? Uh, questions that they might be using, some functional skills, and then strategies. Uh, if you're going to uh, some place and people are using using drugs, what do you do? If you get um, injured and you're allergic to it, you have to go to the doctors, you know, what types of strategies might be involved in uh, asking for help or asking for clarity or refusing, right? you know, again, if someone's trying to offer you something, just for example. Um, and so you try to set up goals for each of these areas, assemble the materials, and after they are all assembled, then you'll want to plan the sequence. What are you doing first and next and next? Now there is a color plan laid out for the procedures for actually doing that, and we're going to look at that Look at that next. But you always want to remember that you want to have a sequence laid out. It also doesn't mean that you're going to do it necessarily in the order that you have, but you're going to have a plan to try to get it done. The phases uh, of color are these, five, these uh, five points here, prepare, present, practice, practice, and then expand. Um, the first point here is to prepare your students, and you want to get them ready for uh, what's coming, so you want to prepare them by, one, finding out what they already know, maybe giving them an overview of the materials that are being covered, see how much they know about it. Also gives them an opportunity to get used to what's going to be coming. And so uh, you may have some pre-activities that are going on here that might introduce the topic, it might introduce special vocabulary, special phrasings that they might use, and it's also going to um, get them ready for what's coming. The next thing that you're going to be doing is presenting. Um, you're going to be presenting the materials for them so that they uh, can uh, learn about these new concepts and these new vocabulary uh, and also the content that they're actually going to be covering. 
You may have them, after the materials are covered, you may have them be doing a variety of things in the practice phase where they're working together or working on some activity that uh, enables them to practice with this new vocabulary, with these new words, and with the new content, uh, and also with the new strategy. As I mentioned before, oftentimes it's uh, good to have students get into small groups and work together. Uh, so some type of activities that are, allow them to practice with the elements that are there. Um, you, you may, well, there's a lot of different ways that you can do this, but you may have them work in, uh, in pairs and trying to accomplish a particular task. Uh, you may give them a scenario where uh, a particular event has happened and they now need to engage uh, the strategies that you had practiced. Um, but regardless, you're going to want them to practice. Uh, when you're done with that, you're going to want them to, this is the wrong word here, folks, you're going to want them to evaluate how well they did, how good were the materials, how helpful was this. And so you'll note and many times in my classes at the, end of the, at the end of the semester, I'll be asking that. How was this? Was it helpful? Did it, was it uh, good for your learning abilities? Did you get something out of this? What is it that you got? You know, how can we make this better type of thing? Some type of self-evaluation. Did they learn? And the last thing is uh, expansion. Always a good thing to do. It's always good to have extra materials around just in case. It's also good to let them know they can build on their own. So students can now take the information that they have already learned through the presentation and the practice. They can take this new information. They can combine it with some of the old. Maybe they'll take this strategy that they've learned in this, in this particular lesson and try to apply it to some other area. So you can have them expand what's going on. Sometimes in, um, in a reading activity, for example, where they're required to respond in some way. Uh, so if we're keeping the same idea of health, for example. I remember reading, uh, having my students read a short story. It was about uh, three or four paragraphs long. It was about this girl uh, who was considering committing suicide. And uh, she's home alone, and she tries to, she's thinking about it, and she gets a knife, and she's thinking about slitting her wrists. And just then, her parents come home, and she drops the knife, and she goes and sits down, and her parents come in and ask her, oh, dear, how was your day? And she said, oh, it's just like, it's just an ordinary day like any other day. Of course, it has all this different meaning. And I, what I did after we went through, you know, presenting the materials, and we talked about a strategy, uh, for uh, de dealing with problems like this, and we also talked about the vocabulary. And one of the things I had them do for an extension, an expansion, was to write a letter to this girl. Um, and so that they were trying to use the materials that they've learned um, in an extended type of way that, you know, I, I didn't know what was going to happen. Um, so that would be a, an interesting thing that you could do in, in, again, some form of expansion. So you have materials that you cover, and you have, but then you can try to grow that, you know, a what-if type of thing. What if you actually met this person and you could respond to them? What would you do? Um, so expansion is going to be the last phase that you're going to have here in uh, a call of instruction. You've done the preparing. You've prepared your students. You've presented the materials. You've practiced. And now that you've gone through all this, now you want to evaluate. How was this? And you can evaluate yourself, obviously, but you can also have other people evaluate you. Record your class. Or have someone sit in and watch, and then you can see about your instructional strategies. How was everything going? How was your voice? Uh, did you have appropriate speech? Were you too fast or too slow? Was your volume not good? Tone, was it clear? Was it understandable? So you should be able to monitor that and see how that is. Is that going to be an imped uh, impediment to your teaching, or is it going to be a plus? Same thing with the topic. Did you know all the stuff, right? I mean, I know if I'm going to be teaching a course on health, I'm going to have to brush up on some information that I don't have. Um, so I'm going to need to be knowledgeable. Is it interesting? Were you interested? Were you like, yeah, this is great stuff? Were you enthused? Very, very true um, idea here. If you're excited about it, very often your students are going to be excited about it too. So you should be interested. Was it well organized? Was it uh, put together in such a way that it's easy, a nice easy flow and students can use it to continue learning? Can they go back to it uh, and learn from it? Okay, so the topic. And then, of course, your teaching method. You know, did you present new vocabulary and new concepts in this lesson? You're obviously you're pre you're reviewing the old, 
and you're letting them see how the old can connect to the new, whether it's concepts or, or linguistics or strategies, but, you know, did you connect to the new? Did you differentiate if necessary, where some students needed extra scaffolding and, and others didn't, where others could be doing things alone? Did you, did you change up your teaching style so that you can meet the needs of the students that you had? Did you have a positive environment? I don't know what positive environment necessarily means, but for me it's that I'm always encouraging my students. I'm always giving them a challenge and letting them know that they can meet and succeed the challenge. Did you use and or teach multiple strategies? Try to give students opportunities to see these multiple strategies in action and actually uh, use them. A variety of things that you can look at when you're analyzing um, a color instruction uh, um, episode, right? Another thing that you should be looking at as far as evaluation is are you monitoring your own uh, professional development? I have said this before and I'll say it again that you should always be learning and studying. Um, it is disheartening to me to see teachers who have stopped learning and they're not interested in trying to learn new ideas and understand new things. Now, I say that with a very large caveat. There are many things that come out into the news and say, oh, this is new, oh, this is great, and it's not new and it's not great, it's the same old thing. It's kind of like the idea of the word new age, you know, the new age movement. Well, it isn't new and it's not an age. Um, it's been here before, and you will find as you study and begin to learn, there are a lot of concepts and ideas that come around and someone says, hey, this is, it's been there before, we've seen this before. Now, that doesn't mean there's not new stuff coming, and so we should continue to try to develop and do research and learn new things. But bear in mind, there's also a lot of stuff there that's just been rehashed and repackaged. Last thing here is that you might want to get a coach. As I've mentioned before, iron sharpens iron, so one man can sharpen another. Uh, you might want someone to evaluate you. Um, obviously, you want to be able to take their, their uh, criticisms uh, properly. But if you get a coach, they're going to be able to help you along. They're going to be able to help and show you the, the, uh, your responsibilities as a color instructor as well as the student responsibilities as a color learner. But if you get a coach, that might be a, uh, a plus for you as far as trying to evaluate your teaching uh, abilities. And that's all that I have for this particular chapter about planning, monitoring, evaluating. There are some very good samples in here, one in particular, uh, which you've seen partially before, the Color Instructional Sequence Guideline. Um, it's on page 93 in the book that I have. It's a nice uh, one-page um, worksheet that helps you develop a color activity with all of the appropriate guidelines and all of the appropriate procedures uh, that you would be going through. So I would recommend that you take a look at that and use that as a possible guide for building uh, Kala instructions. That's all I have now. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.